Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video today. I wanted to talk about um, some increased speculation toward J.D. Vance as the likely pick for Donald Trump's vice president uh, in the 2024 presidential election. Um, this comes one day. These, these reports come one day after the attempted assassination of former President Trump at his political rally, and he's now the Republican nominee for president, or he will be the official Republican nominee for president at the convention in, in, uh, in, in just a few days from now. Tomorrow, he's expected to announce his vice presidential pick. Many people believe that this list has been down to uh, Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. I've previously made a video on this. Governor Doug Burgum of North Dakota and Senator Marco Rubio of the state of Florida. Those are the top three. And then, of course, people have, including me, uh, mentioned names like Glenn Youngkin, governor of Virginia, or, you know, even Tim Scott, who was uh, maybe a month ago considered the front runner no longer. Um, those are really the main people. And as more information has been coming out, uh, I just decided that it would be a little bit interesting. I mean, obviously, this is a, this is just um, reports at the moment. This is not a definitive yes or no, but that there have been... Um, how do they put it? Mysterious vehicles, um, some <laughs> unknown vehicles outside J.D. Vance's house this afternoon, um, you know, apparently, and uh, likely meaning that uh, Trump has picked him to be the next, to be his running mate this election. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that I believe that, as I said in the previous video, this is the best choice for Trump to make at this point. Now, there are downsides for the Republicans, especially people like Trump. For example, I think that, first of all, I think that this, this pick should be between Vance and Rubio. I think that Rubio would be a good choice for vice president. However, Vance at this point is stronger, especially following the events of yesterday. Uh, one of the downsides of J.D. Vance is that the fact that he's, um, I mean, in, in terms of pro Republicans that are more pro-Trump, is that he's from Ohio. And if he does, in fact, win the vice presidency and goes on to become vice president of the United States, he would be replaced uh, Mike DeWine would replace him as um, the next, uh, the ne replace the next senator from Ohio. In terms of senators who are more pro-Trump allies in the Senate, J.D. Vance is one of them. So that would be somebody who would, true Trump would lose in the Senate. For Rubio, you would get a, a Senate replaced, and Mike DeWine is more of a uh, centrist to left-leaning Republican in terms of the way that he governs the state of Ohio. However, Trump, you know, does support him. Um, and then in the state of Florida, Ron DeSantis would replace Marco Rubio. However. That is now, frankly, beside the point. Donald Trump is picking J.D. Vance, in my mind, because of the fact, I think he probably was leaning toward him before. He's from Ohio. He has that appeal. The Rust Belt appeal is from Yale. He's very smart. He would perform very well in a vice presidential debate against Kamala Harris, but because of the insurance policy. And that's, frankly, what we saw happen yesterday. Uh, nobody knows. Nobody. If Donald Trump did, in fact, die yesterday, nobody knows who the Republican nominee for president would have been. It, could have been Nikki Haley, it could have been Vivek Ramaswamy, it could have been Ron DeSantis, it could have been a completely different person. Trump, therefore, and you know, thank God that he survived um, by by one of the thinnest, you know, Gray's disease. That's about as close as it gets to your head. You know, you can't overstate that as well. He was inches away from dying, centimeters away even, um, as an insurance policy, basically saying to people out there who may be radicalized, people out there, and of course this shooter was a registered Republican, but who's to say that anybody would want to assassinate Donald Trump? There are plenty of people who want to assassinate many political figures, Donald Trump probably being the most targeted person in the world or one of the most targeted person people in the world, um, basically saying that, okay, you know what, if you end up killing me, if you end up taking me out, I'm going to be replaced by this person right here, J.D. Vance, who is a staunch conservative. He's definitely not an establishment Republican. He's somebody that's new. He's young. He's going to be around for a long time unless, of course, something horrible happens to him. Um, and he represents this new base of Trump conservatism. He kind of came out of Trump conservatism. Now, back in 2016, he wasn't uh, the, the nicest supporter of Trump. But keep in mind, there aren't many people throughout Trump's political career who have always said nice things about him. They're, they've usually had some nasty things to say about him. That goes with Marco Rubio. That goes with any of those vice presidential contenders, including J.D. Vance, including most people across the political spectrum. But Vance would be the replacement. So Trump basically now can say, if these reports are true and that J.D. Vance is, is now speculated to be announced as vice president or the vice presidential nominee on the Republican ticket tomorrow, that, yep, you get rid of me, you get him. And many people would argue that J.D. Vance is even more 
conservative than Donald Trump. And honestly, that is the truth in terms of policy. Trump, to be honest, on social issues is much more centrist to left-leaning. You go back to the 2016 convention and what he was saying about the LGBTQ community at his RNC speech. Um, you know, that was certainly not uh, the mainstream view of Republicans. Not even people like Jeb Bush supported uh, same-sex marriage. I think that Trump supports same-sex marriage. I mean, Trump, uh, of course, was the president who ended up being successful in, in nominating Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe v. Wade. However, he's not, I think that Trump is not against abortion all the time. I think he wants common sense restrictions on abortion. I think that most Republicans are pro-life in, in the sense that never abortions should never be legal. But Trump is more of a moderate in that sense. Vance is much more of a traditional conservative. He's much more of somebody who would sign a national abortion ban, for instance. So I think that give, putting Vance as the vice president is a very smart decision from Trump at this point in terms of the facts that there are people out there that would want to, would want to get rid of Trump because they view him as a, a serious threat. And you look at the rhetoric that's been used against uh, President Trump and calling him a threat to democracy in you know some some news outlets openly and you know people referring politicians referring him to, to Hitler uh, I don't think that anybody I mean maybe I mean clearly people do but I don't think that mainstream most people believe that Trump is like Hitler you know that's false it's completely false in terms of you look at the way Trump governed compared to the way Hitler I mean, it's just completely ridiculous um, to, it's just an absurd claim to make but that rhetoric can convince people to become radicalized and commit or make assassination attempts to commit horrible crimes against people because of their uh, incorrect beliefs. And that goes both ways. However, right now, this is, of course, looking at Donald Trump as he's been targeted uh, because of the fact that he is the Republican nominee and he's been attacked politically. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. This is just a report coming out. I noticed it. I wanted to report on it. I wanted to make a video on it. Let me know your thoughts on this likely decision, I would say at this point. I, I was leaning toward Vance beforehand. He's, of course, the, the head in the, the betting markets. But what do you think of this pick? And do you think it, this is the right pick at this point in time? Or do you think he should pick somebody else? Should he pick a safer option? Or should, she, should he just do Vivek Ramaswamy? I mean, it just doesn't, at this point, uh, it's all up in the air. And I think that actually it was a very smart, it ended up being a very wise move on Trump's end to wait until this point to make that vice presidential pick. You know, you could go back two days from now and he could have been leaning toward Rubio. He could have been saying, okay, well, or Yunkin or somebody I need like that to help balance out the ticket and appeal to other people across the country. I think Trump, as long as nothing terrible happens to him, he's going to win this election. He's probably going to win it by a pretty substantial amount. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to win all 50 states, like people said after the ass attempted assassination, but I think that he will do very well. Um, I think that he'll do very well. And I think that he's on track to win this election. I don't think if he picks J.D. Vance as vice president, it means he's all of a sudden going to lose the election. That's that's not going to happen. At the end of the day, it's the top of the ticket that mounts, that counts. Um, you know, people like John McCain tried to blame Sarah Palin for his loss. I mean, McCain was just a very poor candidate, in all honesty, with all due respect. Uh, Al Gore was not too happy with Joe Lieberman. You know, George H.W. Bush, I believe, later regretted picking Dan Quayle as VP. But it is what it is at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, it's the top of the ticket. Trump is the man who's running for president of the United States. That's at the end of the day what people are going to vote for. The, who's the president? Um, and I don't think that if we pick Yunkin or Vance, it's really going to affect the election in any significant way whatsoever. I think that the election is relatively set in stone. These these things about Trump coming out with the what happened yesterday, the conviction, everything that's happened to him over the last year or two is, is only going to inspire more enthusiasm for people to get out and vote for Trump. And that's just going to help him across the nation. And I see him winning the election at this point. Look, anything can happen. It's, it's, it's a crazy election year. And I expect things to get crazier as we get closer to the election. But anything is possible. I like to say anything is possible. You look back 15 years ago and, and Barack Obama uh, was the president of the United States. First black person sworn in, first black man sworn in as president of the United States. The, we thought it was an incredibly unifying moment for the country. Who could have thought in 2009 that 15 years later, Donald Trump, who at that point was this brash persona, host of The Apprentice businessman, would, would be president of the United States and then run again for re-election, lose, come back again, 
a pandemic would happen. He'd now be running after an assassination attempt. He'd be running against nobody can predict what would happen. And then even go back, but 15 years before Barack Obama ran for president back in, in 1993 with, with Bill Clinton. I mean, nobody would have expected 15 years down the line that they'd have the first black president of the United States. You know, you go back 15 years before that in, um, in, in, the late 1970s with Jimmy Carter. Nobody in the late 1970s, nobody would have predicted in 19, early 1990s that the fall of the Soviet Union would happen. This is just to frame it as nobody can possibly tell the future. And anybody at any point in time that says, oh, you know, the, we, this, we'll never have a Republican president again, or this will never happen, or the country is, is on this path right now, and it's going to continue on that path, is just lying to you. Because there are these moments in history that just changed the course of history. And that's life, and that happens all the time. And I think that this event, not, I mean, picking J.D. Vance maybe, but the assassination, attempted assassination of Trump is one of those moments that ultimately did have a massive effect historically in the sense that Trump picked J.D. Vance. Who knows who he would have picked if, it, if this didn't happen and, and other things. But this, and, and I think Trump's election was one of those moments in history. I think a lot of things like that happened. Um, all that to say, nothing is set in stone. Anything is possible. I don't want to be like super inspiring, but nothing. Expect the unexpected, especially expect the unexpected in at, at this moment, right before an election. With that being said, thanks for watching this video. Uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts on on Vance as as right now looking to be the the VP. And um, yeah, have a great day. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content.